So where to start with the brand new system in Rome Total War 2 when it comes to the campaign map itself? Well, the developers of Rome Total War 2 have done something a bit different this time. Now what we now know about the campaign map itself is each province will be divided into small regions. Now these regions will manage themselves mainly and will mainly be controlled by the capital of the whole entire province. But why add these regions in in the first place? Well these regions will be relatively small and not all of them having cities in. It may just be a simple case of moving an army in to claim that land. So in conclusion to actually capture a province fully you're gonna to have to take all the regions within that province now it might be a few regions or quite a lot we don't really know I suppose it depends where you're attacking each region will probably have a different style of gameplay whether it be on a hill whether it be flat desert land we do not know but each one will pose a different threat something which you're gonna to have to modify and direct your army towards obviously to overcome the enemy well it's quite simple, in Total War Shogun 2 it was all about capturing the cities to defeat an enemy. Now what I mean by this, although you could have land battles to defeat enemy armies, the main way to win was obviously to capture the province's main capital stronghold or town. So really it all came down to one big siege fight at the end and one last stand for you or the enemy, which really did kind of limit the gameplay and the things you could do with armies and things like that. This will also make conflict a lot more enjoyable for the player and not too short, you know, one big battle and one army is wiped out while the other one is victorious, leaving pretty much an open gateway into their province to capture the capital. Instead, you'll have to make your way from region to region and there probably will be a series of sieges you'll have to do and certain strategic points that you'll have to capture in order to situate your armies in that province and actually take full control. Not only when you want to attack a province and take a province over will you have to deal with the populace already there that obviously don't like you being there you're gonna have to clear out any remaining war bands or enemy armies which are in different regions to control the province that's gonna majorly affect your army's morale your people's morale and obviously without a full working province then you're not going to be victorious on the battlefield and not gonna win the war either way so in conclusion this is actually a good step forward it really does open up a whole range of variety of gameplay for us players. Instead of just fighting siege battles to accomplish the major victories, we're seeing ground battles being more implemented to have a bigger effect on the battlefield itself, so now it's not just going to come down to one big siege. So let's go a bit more in depth to see the features they've added and the reasons why for this region system. Another major point of this region system and the reasons why they did it was the simple fact that certain bits of a certain province will give certain bonuses. Now I've just said the word certain quite a lot but obviously if you're taking Egypt and you have the three pyramids the three pyramids are most likely to be in one particular region within Egypt obviously if you're going to war with Egypt and you want to take Egypt you're gonna to have to capture all the regions now each region will probably give a bonus especially the ones with the three pyramids in obviously we know having a major wonder like that really does increase and add bonuses to your troops and the people living in that province which I would be guessing is one of the major reasons why the region system was implemented in the first place to help the player have strategic value in different bits of land within a province so it's not just one big army clashing on a field over and over again until you have a straight path to their stronghold instead you're gonna have to fight for certain bonuses that will help your troops to take over the rest of the province which really does help have a massive variety of gameplay types and sieges and battles within taking a province and really does make the war that you're going to be fighting against an enemy a lot longer instead of just taking it all in one and that's it they're eradicated then you're going to end up fighting maybe on more than one front with more than one separate army to take more than one different regions to gain different bonuses to finally get to the major capital of the province and win the war something which i think is really cool really experimental and is really going to help vary gameplay because in Shogun 2 it really was limited down to just one final siege at the end as I keep saying. But I have to stress the point that this is a big step forward in terms of campaign gameplay mechanics. Something which we should all be very happy. So on to point 2 about this video is the fact that the navy and land battles will be combined. Now I thought primarily that was just for siege purposes because obviously when we saw the Battle of Carthage last year we saw the fact that the navy was a huge part of actually the Roman assault on Carthage. However now after seeing the demo we now know obviously if you have a navy that's near to a land army and a battle commences and both sides have a conjugal navy to fight then you will automatically have your navy entered into that battle so what that means is you'll be able to board troops off if you win the sea battle while the land battle still raging off 
you'll be able to actually get your troops off the ship onto land and maybe flank around your enemy and bring them in to help. So now you've got more than one different area or aspect of gameplay that you're going to have to focus on as a commander on the battlefield. Watch out for navy moves, navy flanks, things like that and navy tactics while at the same time controlling or defending or attacking with your main land force. So having more than one objective and strategic flag on the map to help you vary your gameplay styles is a huge step forward. So now you're going to have to manage more than one. Some people say that's bad because they like the simplicity of it, but really a total war game is all about learning how to be an efficient, good commander and raise an empire from the ground. So last but not least, I want to talk to you guys about the brand new recruitment system. Now in Shogun 2, we obviously knew that when you were recruiting troops, you would recruit them from a castle or main city of yours. Now, obviously, that would be quite irritating at times, as obviously, after you've recruited a group of spearmen, you'd have to take them, or samurai, sorry, you'd have to take them across the entire map to meet up with your major army, finally build it up over enough time to make a move. By that time, the enemy had responded to your moves, and you ended up just having one of those big battles on the field that kind of d dictated the fate of the entire war and whether or not you were going to capture that province. But now you'll be able to actually recruit separate units, mainly mercenaries, from the surrounding areas that you're in. Maybe if you're in a region in Egypt and you're a Roman legion, you might be able to actually hire some type of maybe war elephants from the surrounding area, which may also come into effect with a region system. Maybe that region where the troops are stationed in gives certain mercenaries able or give certain armies the ability to obviously train certain mercenaries or hire certain mercenaries while in that region, something that's really interesting and funky to think about. That might obviously be another reason for you to send an army into the middle of the desert is to get a cool and very powerful unit that's out there. So those are all things obviously to be experimented with. But the system itself, you can now actually singularly hire mercenaries and sometimes I expect train legions from the army yourself. Obviously the campaign map is a lot bigger than Shogun 2 so it would be quite frustrating I would imagine to actually have to train a series of troops or one troop in your city and march them all the way across to this new land. That would take too much time, you know, you'd spend money on the troops before they even get into battle and it would just be pretty much useless. So it would prolong the game and it just would not be fluent and efficient gameplay mechanic really. So we're quite lucky actually and, you know, quite fortunate that the game developers have really took into consideration about how fluent they want the game to work and how fluent they want the military strategy to be when playing on the campaign. Now the campaign obviously is a big part of this game so I'll be back with more information at a later date about the campaign and the features within it. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll be back at a later date with more information about rome total war 2 i'll see you guys in a bit